This is the daily devotional from New Life Community Church of the Nazarene. I'm Pastor Tom, and I'm filling in for Pastor Kurt this week. What are we supposed to do now? We've been talking this week about what we are supposed to do when things are not normal. In normal times, we know what we should do. There are routines that we follow, habits that we maintain, places we go every day or every week. But what do we do when things are turned upside down? The funny thing is that the commands that God gives us about how we should live don't change. The great commandment, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, is still the core of what we do. Its companion, love your neighbor as yourself, is still our standard for how we treat others. And we are still called by the Great Commission to go, make disciples, and teach people to obey and to model that obedience. Whether we live in normal times or or in a world that feels upside down, those are still the basics of what God calls us to do. But this is hard. No, it is impossible except that there is some good news. Let's go back to the Great Commission. Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Did you hear that? And surely I am with you always. Jesus has not left us alone. He assures us that he has all authority on earth, right here, right now, in every situation. But even more importantly, he says he will always be with us. That actually doesn't seem to make much sense. We only need to turn to the book of Acts and we find Jesus going into heaven. How can he still be with us? Well, before he left, he told the disciples that they were to wait in Jerusalem because the Holy Spirit was coming. This Holy Spirit living in us is the way that Jesus is present with us. In the Gospel of John, he is called the Advocate or the Comforter. Those are good words. It is the Holy Spirit, it is through the Holy Spirit that we are enabled to follow God's commands, whether the world is right side up or upside down. But that takes us back to the great commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. That is, we need to go all in. The Holy Spirit needs space to work. If we only give God a little piece of ourselves, the Holy Spirit doesn't have space to work. He needs all of us. That is the invitation of the great commandment. Will you go all in for the Lord? About 150 years ago, Dwight L. Moody heard these words from another evangelist. The world has not yet seen what God can do with a man fully consecrated to him. Moody spent many hours thinking and praying about that statement, and in the end his response was, By God's help, I aim to be that man. And Moody went on to be the greatest evangelist of the 19th century. That is still God's invitation today, to be a person fully consecrated to God, someone who will go all in. The world has yet to see what God can do with a man fully consecrated to him. That statement is not true. The world has seen many men and women who are fully consecrated to God. We know some of their names very well. The Apostle Paul, Billy Graham, Mother Teresa, Martin Luther, John Calvin, John Wesley. Those are people who are world famous. But there are many, many more that we have never heard of. We do not have to be famous to be fully consecrated. We have been talking this week about doing the ordinary in extraordinary times. For most of us, our calling is to get up each day and do what God calls us to do. Love God, love our neighbor, tell others about Jesus, eat right, exercise. It is unlikely that any of us will be world famous or even Tucson famous. Most of the people who are fully consecrated to God will not be remembered for very long in this world. They are the ones who have gone all in, who love God with all their heart, soul, and strength. But they have lived very ordinary lives. They have gone to work, raised families, served in the church, served in the community, cared for those in need. They will never be world famous. But they will be heaven famous. 
which is a far better thing. You may remember this song. I dreamed I went to heaven, and you were there with me. We walked upon the streets of gold beside the crystal sea. We heard the angels singing, then someone called your name. You turned and saw this young man, and he was smiling as he came. And he said, Friend, you may not know me now. And then he said, But wait, you used to teach my Sunday school when I was only eight, and every week you would say a prayer before the class would start. And one day when you said that prayer, I asked Jesus in my heart. Then another man stood before you and said, Remember the time a missionary came to your church and his pictures made you cry. You didn't have much money, but you gave it anyway. Jesus took the gift you gave, and that's why I'm here today. One by one they came, far as the eyes could see, each life somehow touched by your generosity. Little things that you had done, sacrifices made, unnoticed on the earth, in heaven now proclaimed. And I know that up in heaven you're not supposed to cry, but I am almost sure there were tears in your eyes. As Jesus took your hand and you stood before the Lord, he said, My child, look around you, for great is your reward. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you gave. Heaven famous is so much better than world famous. And that begins by going all in, by following the great commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And when we love God, that will be demonstrated in the way we live and in our love for each other. Let's pray. Father God, we pray once more that you will help us to go all in. Even though we may not be world famous or Tucson famous, we want to be heaven famous. We thank you that this does not require being incredibly skilled or talented. It does not require good looks or a charming personality. We thank you that it only requires that we allow ourselves to be guided by your Spirit. It only requires that we go all in. And we pray for New Life Community Church of the Nazarene, that this will be a place filled with people who are all in, who love you with every part of their being. In Jesus' name, amen.